Next slide. There are three basic types of spectra, a continuous spectrum, an emission line spectrum, and an absorption line spectrum. A continuous spectrum, also called a thermal spectrum, has energy, light, at all wavelengths, and it depends on only the temperature. Any object made of dense gases, lots of particles in a given volume, liquids or solids will produce a continuous or thermal spectrum. Continuous means there are no breaks. One color merges smoothly into another color and so on. Also, the air you breathe, even at the top of Mount Everest, is considered a dense gas. You have to be many tens of miles above the Earth's surface to get to what we would consider to be a thin or low density gas with just a few particles in a given volume. A continuous or thermal spectrum depends on the temperature of the object only. It does not depend on the object's composition or density. Because a thermal or continuous spectrum depends on just the temperature, a chunk of solid lead and a same size chunk of solid iron at the same temperature will have the same spectrum. You can't tell them apart. The pictures sh show two waves of displaying a spectrum, either with a graph like on the left or an image on the right. Both pictures show you that as an object's temperature is raised, more shorter wavelength light is produced and the object gets brighter, more intense, at all wavelengths. The color tells you the temperature. Very hot things are blue, not red, and cool things are red. If you take the spectrum of something and can find out at which wavelength or color it is brightest, the wavelength of the peak, you can determine more precisely the temperature of the object using a simple formula discovered by Wilhelm Wien. The peak wavelength equals 2.9 million divided by the temperature in the Kelvin scale. So the temperature in Kelvin equals 2.9 million divided by the peak wavelength. For example, the sun's surface has a peak wavelength at the green-yellow wavelength of 497 nanometers. So we can derive a temperature of the surface of 5,840 Kelvin, which is about 10,000 on the Fahrenheit scale. Now, of course, our sun does not look green-yellow to us because there are all those other colors in the spectrum, which, when put together, we see the combination as white. Hotter objects are brighter and bluer than cooler objects. Stars are hot enough to glow in the visible band or optical band. Planets and animals and plants glow in the infrared. Spectral lines, whether they are bright emission lines or dark absorption lines, are produced by thin, low-density, rarefied gases, where there are very few particles in a given volume, such as the upper parts of our atmosphere, many tens of miles above the Earth's surface. The type of spectrum you see depends on the temperature of the thin gas relative to what's in the background, behind the thin gas cloud. If the thin, low-density gas cloud is hotter than what's in the background, you'll see emission lines plus the spectrum of the background object. If a continuous spectrum source is in the background and it is cooler than the hot thin gas, then emission lines are seen on top of a continuous spectrum. The emission lines are produced or emitted directly by the hot thin gas cloud. Here, the picture shows nothing in the background, so you see the emission lines on top of a black background. If the thin, low density gas cloud is cooler than a continuous spectrum source, a hot dense object, in the background, you'll see absorption lines because the thin, cool gas cloud is absorbing certain specific wavelengths of light that were produced by the hot, dense object. The thin, cooler gas cloud is filtering out or blocking certain wavelengths or colors produced by the hot, dense object. In the textbook, I use the analogy of a dirty water stream with a filter to describe what's going on with absorption line spectrum. The faucet produces a stream of dirty water with all different sizes of dirt chunks in it. It is analogous to the hot, dense object, producing the full rainbow of colors. The dirty water is collected by a bucket, which is analogous to your camera, or eye. If you put a filter in the path of the dirty water stream, dirt chunks of a particular size are blocked from reaching the bucket. The filter is analogous to the cool, thin gas cloud that absorbs certain specific wavelengths of light. 
much less of those particular colors or wavelengths reach your camera or eye. For the absorption line spectrum, note the three things in the path. The hot, dense object producing the continuous spectrum, the cool, thin cloud absorbing some of the light, and the spectrometer, which is represented in the picture by a narrow opening and something, either a prism or a diffraction grating, that will spread out the light to make the spectrum reaching our camera or eye. The pattern of the lines you see in the emission line spectrum, or the absorption line spectrum, depends on the chemical composition of the thin, low-density gas. This is what we use to find out what stars, planets, and moons are made of. Each element or type of atom and molecule produces a unique pattern of spectral lines. A gas cloud made of different types of atoms, different elements, or molecules will produce the patterns of each element or molecule superimposed on each other in the spectrum. Disentangling the various patterns from each other enables the astronomers to determine the composition of the thin gas cloud or atmosphere. You must use the pattern of lines, not just one or two spectral lines, because one element may have one spectral line at the same wavelength as another element's spectral line, or it could be shifted by the Doppler effect I'll describe later in the lecture. However, an element's pattern of lines is what is unique. Using a single line to identify the type of gas would be like scanning just one line of a barcode at the checkout stand. You need to scan the entire barcode to know what you have. 